we are talking finances again. Elections over. Um, COVID-19, we've got a vaccine. We're watching the markets. Let's start with interest rates. We talk about interest rates for borrowing money, but what does what do interest rates do in your world, Eric? Well, it's not just what it does in my world. It's what it does in all of our worlds. Now, when you artificially, the, the Fed is something that uh, works actively upon today's situation. They really don't look out in the future very far. And we've known this through the last 100 years because every single time we've had some sort of economic turnaround uh, being to a, you know, either a recession, depression, it's usually made by manipulation of either interest rates or money creation, which is all in charge by the Fed. So the problem with having irregularly low interest rates for a long period of time means that a lot of the production or projects that are going to be invested in um, will be done hastily and a lot of times without a real good warrant. This creates artificial um, scenarios where you, we could find, you know, bubbles start to be created by these types of investments, like the stock market, for instance. Um, cheap money that you can just keep pouring in there, keep making that bubble happen. Inevitably, with any of these types of manufacturing of rates, um, you're going to see some sort of pop at the end of it. That correlating to us as gold holders, well, in any crash, you're going to want gold. So. All right, so let's go shift to the other thing that people consider, which is now the value of the dollar. Printing, printing, printing devalues the dollar. How long can we go with the dollar, and do you think the dollar is going to continue to be the standard currency in the world? Well, that, that, that's a really good point. So the dollar right now, if we, the reason why the dollar stands strong today is because it is the reserve currency of the world. Um, and it's continuously con uh, accepted as a reserve currency. Uh, if you shift the confidence of that reserve currency status, that's where, that's where it comes to an end. I mean, that's where you see crashes. And if that did happen in this, in this day and age, the dollar found itself no longer the currency reserve and it crashed, that would be a worldwide depression worse than the one that we saw in the, uh, the 30s for sure. What do you say to people that really don't know a whole lot about precious metals or especially gold? What do they need to know? What do you say to those people? Okay, so it was best said actually in one of our blogs recently from one of, our, one of my uh, brokers, but he said, you know, gold is slow money. And it, it, is, it is definitely that. It's not going to be one of these types of investments that you buy into. You buy today, a week later, it, you know, it's up 1,000%. That's not why you buy it. You buy it for long-term growth. And if you are a new buyer to gold, buy it, put it away, and forget about it. It will work for you over time. That's the best advice I could get to give to a uh, new investor. All right, so then what about the person that's already invested? What do you say to the people that are already invested in gold right now? Um, you made a smart move, put your seatbelt on, and wait. So even waiting now, even as high as we're seeing gold go, these are all numbers that a couple of years ago, people said we're a fantasy. You still think it's the right thing? I, I don't think these numbers are anywhere. Unfortunately, I don't think these numbers are anywhere near what we're going to see in, in the next five, ten years. I think the next five, ten years, what we're doing right now, there's no checks, there's no balances, there's no budgets. You try running your checkbook like that, how long is that going to last? It's one of the reasons why I appreciate you doing these interviews, because um, there's a lot of information people get in having reliable sources. I hope people go to the website, because uh, having valuable and reliable information, especially now, matters more than ever. So I really appreciate the time. I also want to say thank you very much uh, for everything uh, that you know, you've done through us through the years, talking with you back and forth. Uh, we've appreciated it. And also, uh, where I come from and my family, we say Merry Christmas. Yep. So Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays uh, to you and to all your viewers. Well said. Merry Christmas. Thanks.